Earlier this year, I took delivery of this rather magnificent bandsaw, the Laguna B18X. And since then, I've had plenty of time to get my teeth stuck into it and use it in a variety of projects here within the workshop. And today's video is gonna be about me sharing a list of all the things I really, really like about it. And a few things as well that I think they could improve on. Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel. And can you believe it? It's been over four months since my shiny new Laguna bandsaw has been installed here into the workshop. And I thought now would be as good a time as any to share my thoughts and experiences with how I'm getting along with it because it has certainly generated a lot of interest here in the UK market. Now, if you are relatively new to the channel, there is a little bit of a backstory as to why I decided to go with a large, almost industrial sized bandsaw and it boiled down to the question, fundamentally, is it safe for someone who's only got the functional use of one arm to use a table saw? And after a period of time using a table saw, I decided no, it wasn't really for me going forwards. So I have switched up tactics, if you like, and for sheet goods, I'm now really happy just using my track saw with my bench dog's rail hinge. And the bandsaw is mainly for ripping long cuts of hardwood. So I've had plenty of projects on the go in that four month period. And I just want to share with you where I'm up to with this, what I really like about it. And there's plenty of those things. And there are a few things I think Laguna could possibly improve on moving forward. So let's jump to the positives first. Okay, number one, first and foremost, let's look at the sheer power and scale of this machine. It has a three horsepower motor and a resaw capacity of just over 16 inches. Okay, it currently has a one inch blade fitted to it, but according to the manufacturer's guidelines, can take up to an inch and a quarter blade. Anything I have thrown at it, so 14 inch thickness of walnut on a resaw, is that the best you've got? All right, the power of it is just phenomenal. A kind of an analogy might be if you've got a car with a powerful engine, 95, 98% of the time you don't need that power, but it's good to know it's there for when you do need it. So yeah, that's the first thing that really impressed me the most. Let's move on to number two. Right, number two, and I'm gonna keep this really brief, is changing the blade on this machine. Quite simply put, if I can do it easily, one-handed, then two-handed folk are gonna have no issue at all. And I actually have a video about how I changed the blade on this. So there'll be a pop-up somewhere in the corner and a link in the description if you wanna check it out. But quite simply put, really straightforward, dead easy to do. Okay, a few quick fire ones. The control knobs for opening and closing the top and bottom doors work really well and have that kind of reassuring clunk about them. This little window here comes in really handy for when you are changing the blade and you need to correctly align the blade on the wheels. This little window on the front here is perfect if you are someone who is clueless like me because it takes the guesswork out of getting the tension correct on the blade. The cast iron top on this model, the 18BX, like everything else, is absolutely huge. It comes in at just on 66 centimetres, which is about 26 inches by just under 51 centimeters, which is 20 inches. You'll notice as well on the marking gauge for the European and UK market, it is available in millimeters, centimeters, as well as inches. I really like the fence on this. I have it 98, 99% of the time in its high setting and it works fantastically well for me. It does have an adjustable stop block, so you can set that up anywhere along the fence, but if you're doing repeat cuts, but also, as you'll see here, it only locks at the front. It doesn't actually lock at the back, but when you lock it in place, it's really solid. So I like that feature. Fence on this is fantastic. Having all this space on the top as well works really, really well. 
Now one extra I certainly would recommend if you're thinking of buying any Laguna bandsaw is the portable wheel setup. Now I have had issues with similar things on other machines like my Axminster Planar Fitness, so the wheels that I bought with that are pretty rubbish to be honest, but this one considering it weighs in at about 190 kilos, which is somewhere around 400 pounds. When you can lift it up with that, it is easy to move around and when you're done, it's simply a case of putting your foot underneath the pedal, bringing it back down to settle down, and that setup works really, really well. Another feature that drew me to this brand and model when I was shopping around are the ceramic guides. Now, I don't wanna keep harping on about the one-handed thing, but only being able to use my left hand, setting up these, is so simple to do. When I looked at some of the competitors that are available in the UK, their systems seem a lot more convoluted and complicated. Whereas with these, it can just take me seconds and I've got it tuned in exactly how I want it. So the ceramic guides and the actual feature, how they have these set up around it, really simple to use and very easy very effective indeed. Right, in terms of functionality and ease of use, it isn't the most complicated of machines to use. You've got your start and stop button here and an emergency stop button, but I very, very rarely use these two. I just get it started up here and on the BX models, you have the brake pedal on the bottom. Now again, for single-handed use, particularly when you've just pushed through some hardwood, you don't wanna be reaching over and looking for the stop button, but you have got the pedal feature down there and it stops the blade a lot quicker. So that brake feature, that brake pedal, I use all the time and it comes in really handy. Having this mitre slot just to the right hand side of the blade here really does come in handy and my maybe not so accurate calipers are giving it at 18.9, 19 millimeters in terms of width. Now I picked up this off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested, this featherboard, and it really does come in handy where you can slot it in there, particularly if you're doing rip cuts in the taller pieces of hardwood, like I'm showing with the walnut here, helps to keep things steady and push it against the fence as you're pushing it through. So yeah, little accessory there, would recommend it if you're thinking of picking up one of these machines. Another huge positive about this bandsaw, and I touched on it in my I bought a new bandsaw video, is how quiet it is when you operate it. And I've got my little uh, decibel meter on my iPad here, and when I switch it on, it's coming in around 68, 69 decibels. And what you'll actually find is your dust extractor will be louder than the bandsaw. So again, it's one of them things really you should look at when you're thinking of buying a new one, particularly if your workshop is close to neighbors and you wanna keep the noise down to an absolute minimum. Right, we're nearly at the end of this video and in terms of customer satisfaction and would I recommend this product? Well, bearing in mind, I'm not sponsored or affiliated by Laguna, but Laguna, if you are listening, uh, I'm your man. <laughs> Is Would I recommend this product? Well, if I went back to when I started researching bandsaws uh, for purchasing for my needs, I would buy the exact same model again. That's how happy I am with it and how happy I've been with it over the course of the last four months in a variety of projects and uses. Is it perfect? No, it does have a few little niggles um, that I'd just like to share with you now. Firstly, I just wanna talk about the cast iron top. Yes, it is lovely, but some of the edges are not rounded off. And if you catch yourself on one of them, yeah, you do know about it. Now, can that be rectified? Of course it can, just a little bit of filing on the end. But when you're talking top dollar that you're paying for these machines, should that be something that's done before it leaves the factory? In my humble opinion, yes it is. Another one is this little um, flap here that covers up the blade, has a magnetic strip on the inside. Now for some reason, my magnetic strip doesn't work. So as it stands at the moment, I'm having to put a magnet on the inside to keep it in place. Now that's a safety thing and you think really that should be working properly and it currently doesn't. Now I have spoke to the company that supplied uh, the bandsaw to me uh, and they said they're gonna get in touch with Laguna but I've not heard anything back yet. So that's something really that should be looked at and resolved. Probably just my machine but worth checking if you're thinking of buying one yourself. And the last one I wanna talk about is dust extraction. Now, 
in my opinion, now and I could be wrong here, and it's definitely going to depend on your extractor, there is a bit of an issue here. Now, as you can see in the back, I have this um, Axminster Craft AC82E with the optional filter on the top. Now, I bought that when I was researching um, dust extraction from a planar thicknesser. And it has on it that it needed to be 1000 is it CFM cubed or something like that. I can't quite understand what that means, but that met the specifications for that and works fine. Now in the manual, it says the same. It needs to be a minimum of 1000, I think it's CFM. And for this machine, the, uh, the 18 BX, it's not powerful enough. All right, it does have the two dust ports that go in. So you get a splitter and then you've got a top port that works just under here and then one for the bottom. But I'm having issues when I'm doing some continuous use, I'm having to stop and then get the, um, get the vacuum in there to get the dust because the extraction with my dust extractor, even though it does meet the specifications, isn't good enough. Now I think really Laguna needs to look at that and maybe revisit the manual and say it needs to be a minimum of 2000 CFM or whatever. I'm at some point gonna have to look for a different dust extractor, which you know will be able to cope with this as well as the planar thicknesser. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have to put up with it. But you know, I did do that and I did do my homework on it thinking my dust extractor's fine for this and it's not up to it, all right? So that's something you know, if you're thinking of buying one yourself, look at your specifications for your dust extractor and, and go, yeah, I'd say it probably needs to be at least double what it's saying. So that's 2000 CFMs, whatever CFMs might mean. And there's just one final point I'd like to make before we wrap this video up. Now, this, as you know, is the 18BX, which is the big fella of the range. And I appreciate for the majority of UK workshops, it wouldn't be suitable due to its sheer size and weight. But if you are thinking of looking at a Laguna bandsaw, you go down the range, you've got the 1412, which is the entry model, and the 14BX. Now, here's just my input if you're looking at one of those. If your budget can stretch to the 14BX over the 1412, then go for that model, maybe have to save up just a little bit longer. There's two major differences between the 1412 and the 14BX. Firstly is that brake pedal, and I would recommend that to anyone. I think it's a brilliant safety device to have because you might be using both your hands and you need to get it stopped quickly. You've got your foot to do it, whereas the 1412 doesn't have the brake pedal. And then finally, you get that little bit of extra power in the 14BX over the 1412. So I think you get two and a half horsepower on a standard three pin plug as opposed to 1.75 horsepower. This one, the three horsepower model, it's the 16 amp plug, you know, the, the larger one. So again, if you're thinking of getting the 18 BX, you've got to bear that one in mind. You've got to have the suitable power in your workshop. So I hope that's helped for you folks because I know there are a lot of UK makers out there who are thinking of investing in these. Uh, one final thing that I forgot to mention about the things that I like about it, it looks fantastic, it really does. Now, obviously we don't pick machinery based on how it looks, but is there a factor in there? Maybe a little bit, yeah, because if you didn't pick a car on how it looked, then all the cars would look the same, obviously, but I love the finish on this. The black with the silver writing and the red, it works really, really well together and it looks really smart here in the workshop. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. I hope it's maybe helped you a little bit if you're thinking of investing in one. So as ever, take care, you know, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.